So indeed, I will complement the talk by, by Jean. So Jean is from the policy side. He explained to you the policies behind uh, this project. Uh, I'm on working on the executive agency. So we are, let's say, implementing the calls and following the project throughout its entire in a life, uh, life cycle, of course. Eh? Uh, so I would like to, to really give you an overview about uh, the project portfolio that we have built up and we are further building up to support the EuroGeo initiative. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, it starts, of course, with EuroGeo, but Jean made my life easy, so we already explained what we aim to do at EuroGeo. So I will directly go to the portfolio that we build up in Horizon 2020. So this is an overview of all the projects that were funded within EuroGeo. So it's more than 200 million uh, EU contribution. Um, yeah, of course, I will not explain all the projects, just to say that, as you see on, on the left here, we have some, um, some uh, here you are, uh, some focus on polar of course this is not really in scope of this of this community i think so i will not explain it uh, we have uh, observations so we talked about in situ observations so we do at investments in the past because these projects have are closing now um, for example twiga is led by the tu delft as, as we are in the netherlands i would like to showcase some um, dutch uh, examples tu delft building up observations in africa in kenya in rwanda in uganda and so on and making uh, actionable geosurfs out of these data. We have Meloa focusing on, um, on oceans. We have Hypernets uh, setting up CalVal sites for um, the Cal Cal for the Sentinels, for example, in the NMAP mission of DLR. Um, we also had several opportunities, several uh, projects on citizen observatories. These have all DLR closed now, but for example, we observed has still a tremendous interesting information, a cookbook published on the website. So if you are into citizen observations, please have a look. And in, as part of the Green Deal call, so the last call of Horizon 2020, we had these seven projects on, um, on uh, enabling citizens to act on climate change. The first three uh, on top, they are, let's say, uh, focusing on monitoring environmental uh, observations. Huh? The PS Lifestyle and Aurora, they are more focusing on environmental, uh, um, yeah, environmental impacts. So how can we support youth, uh, citizens to go to a more sustainable lifestyle for example, crowdsourcing of PV uh, uh, cells in, in, uh, in, at universities, for example, in Madrid. And we also have some projects here, the two bottom, uh, on, um, on educational learning, on, uh, on yeah, lifelong learning, on climate and on um, sustainable aspects. Huh? Now, uh, this is the overview, but I would like to focus uh, on, on eShape and here on these commercial services. Uh, why I will explain in, in, a, in a second. So first, eShape. E-Shape is the flagship project that we have uh, established in EuroGeo. So uh, this started in April 2019. It will run till April next year. And it was really um, so leveraging Copernicus Geo's data and, and supporting European industry, downstream industry, to work with this data and to make something useful out of it in line with the priorities of, of Geo. So let's say showcasing what Europe is capable of doing, but also leveraging from what uh, geo is offering to us it's a big project 68 partners they have uh, these uh, seven showcases as you see below agriculture health renewable energy and so on and all all over they have um, 37 pilots um, and they have horizontal activities now i will showcase i will explain what it does by just giving you an example of, of the agriculture showcase in the next slide so this is i, I could have taken another one but i just uh, Choose, has chosen for agriculture. We have the seven pilots here. So they are working closely with Ian Jarvis on GeoGlam to, to support their activities. They are, um, for example, they have a, a, an, a pilot on the cap, so using machine learning to support, let's say, the continuous monitoring uh, for the new cap. Uh, vegetation index crop insurance in Ethiopia is done by, uh, again, Dutch University, U20, and, and, and so on. Now, um, behind all these pilots are a, a mini consortium, so a few companies working together on making a service available. And the interesting thing about eShip is that really the project implements the spirit of GEO in the sense that companies are collaborating. You see that all these, all these pilots here, they have common issues, which are here on the right. And they work together on it. They, they try to solve each other's uh, problems. Like Thomas mentioning, you want to, to check for bottlenecks existing and work on that. Well, ESHIP is also doing this to some extent. For example, data integration. How do you combine satellite data with in situ with other data like parcels and boundaries and so on? They, they, they com the community is working on that collectively. To cloud or not to cloud. Eh? So we had the, the Copernicus Diases in the past years. 
uh, sharing experiences, what goes well, what goes wrong, and this resulted into some very good examples about using GreoDS, for example, with Geo. Uh, so we have some good examples and a shared experience, and the project was there to um, to steer this, this process, I would say. So um, if you want to talk, you should talk to Marie-Francoise Quadro from OGC, who is leading this activity in Ishe. Co-design. Uh, so uh, th there was a question before to Tom, how can you make sure that um, users and you as providers, you link, you, you understand each other, or users know what you do. Co-design is, of course, uh, part of the, of the solution. And interesting uh, idea of eShip is that they started from a co-design methodology um, implemented by Mean Paritech in France, the coordinator, uh, which was implemented, for example, for the automotive industry, but they applied it here in the project on Earth observation and Every pilot, every of the 37 pilots needed to exercise this co-design framework, and now they are going to see how they can make this exploitable by co-design as a service within Geo, who knows what the future will be. So uh, also, it's not only about making sure that an application is really fitted to the, to the needs of the user, but also looking about how do you operationally want to run this uh, solution. For example, some users, they might need a platform with a, a, a UI, some might need an API, some might need automated push of, of data. Commercial expectation. Each of the parts of ESIP was forced to make a, a business plan, well guided, well supported from, from the project. And also, and this was a common issue, of course, we already discussed about it, uh, good reference data, good in situ data, and they made a very good um, uh, attempt. And this was led by Wageningen University here, the AgroStack database, where they combined, they tried to harmonize various uh, time series of in situ data for agriculture, uh, and they make it available in a database. Uh, with a common API, and then they build a visualization tool on top so you can drill down, so you can filter, for example, here, locations with phenology data on my maze, and you can then filter down and show the, uh, visualize the, the time series of data. Um, that's about eShape, so that's the pilots, huh? and then, of course, horizontally, there are all the different aspects, like the code design, I explained the, the support for cloud, to cloud or not to cloud, the user uptake, uh, so, if you want to, 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 to bridge the gap between the use and yourself, please don't go only to the living planet and the EGU in Vienna, but also go to the, 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 the fairs and the, and the exhibitions where the industry is. If you want to do agricultural applications, go to the agro uh, industry fairs and, and, see, and go there and, and, and explain what earth observation can mean for them. So it's about user uptake. Also sustainability of pilot. Uh, they have a lot of things that they will put on the on the website for support of the community. Something what, uh, what I also expect from uh, projects like uh, Open Earth Monitor and EO4U is that they do not only deliver their results, their impact as, as written in the proposal, but if you see, because you're all big projects, if you see best practices appearing, also make sure that these are getting known and communicated to the community. One example is here at eShape. They had to make uh, 37 data management plans, and they, 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 they made a self-assessment tool supporting this uh, so that each, each pilot could um, do a self-assessment of their compliance towards the geodata management principles and the fair principles of ours in 2020. And they made this tool, and they will now publish it on the geo website, and maybe this becomes a DMP as a service. So also make sure that these best practices that they are being exploited. So eShape, check the website, check their Twitter account, and as they will be uh, publishing their results uh, in the next months because they end down in um, April next year. Okay, that's eShape. Then uh, very quickly, uh, also some other pro uh, projects. I will not go in detail because I don't have the time, I think. Um, but just to say that these are four, uh, five examples of projects trying to make a commercial service out of Copernicus and other data. And Vision is focusing on the CAP, so they have uh, paying agencies and also controlling bodies from the um, uh, organic farming in the, in the, in the consortium. Um, and again, they, saw, they also struggle with how do we access Sentinel data combined with in situ data, apply machine learning onto it. So certainly the two projects on the table here today, they can bring um, assets to them as well. Uh, by the way, they are also, let's say, developing a data cube, so also here they can link with, with assets which are like Sentinel and so on. They are certainly interested in that. We have VDGOs focusing on the wine industry. They are combining a lot of uh, a very high, heterogeneous set of data. They are, they are going from in-field measurements with cameras in the vineyards uh, through climate models, Sentinel data, meteor data, whatever, 
uh, farm input as well, so on irrigation and, and fermentation and so on, and they then make a management system for the, for the wine, for the uh, wine producing companies. Next land, also very interesting, if successful, if successful, they will combine the offerings of several service providers, Vito, DHI, uh, Demos, uh, on agriculture and on forestry, and with, with, the, with the spirit that sometimes uh, the user needs a solution where, where the different service providers have part of the puzzle. And I want to make a platform where all these service providers are connected and the user can, or, and somebody can uh, make a solution on the platform, making use of all the different products from the different service providers. So joining forces and let's see how this can work. Joint exploitation is not easy, but here again, they will make, they will try, they will uh, make an, an Eagle Star. They also have the, the Terra Due Elite platform head supporting this, so also the cloud bursting is supported. And uh, maybe this opens up opportunities for you as well to connect to them, and, uh, and because some of the partners here for Open EO, uh, Open Earth Monitor, have also um, some assets on, on agriculture and forestry. There is also SAFERS working on forest fires, emergencies. There is also uh, Sustin Tech. It's very interesting. They have a vessel with a lot of in situ measurements and they measure their fuel, for example, and the aim is to make tuna fishery more sustainable. So less fuel, um, more sustainable fisheries, reduction of greenhouse gas emissions and so on. So again, so I just want to say these are five projects that have a very good idea what they want to build, but still, I mean, they do a good job, but still they have some issues on uh, exploiting the data and clearly the advances in these two projects can, can help them and we should share each other's results. Now, uh, last, so that was Horizon 2020, that's what we have today, but of course we also have um, Horizon Europe already there for two years. Uh, this is a structure, I guess you all know it by heart because you, you wrote a winning proposal. So we are in cluster six. Just to say that in the autumn of uh, 2021, we had the first call where we uh, started now uh, eight projects, uh, which starts all now in June, between June and November, uh, investment of 44 million of EU uh, contribution. And we had four, three calls that I would like to quickly uh, demonstrate. So there was one call on biodiversity. That is the, the reddish call here. That's the one from uh, Open Earth Monitor and EU for EU. So, uh, tools to support the uptake and accessibility and exploitability of Eagle data. And then we had here the European Green Deal data space. So just quickly uh, showing you the pointers of the, of the project. So of course I cannot share details because the projects are being started now. On biodiversity, we have Be Useful, led by Technical University in Denmark, uh, focusing on, on C. So uh, Emotnet is a clear partner in that. We have uh, Garden, broader in scope, led by CRAT. Then on the call where you responded, there are the two projects, but uh, status will also uh, detail the EU for you later on. And then we had finally uh, the Green Deal uh, data space. So you are, you are making tools. The Green Deal, uh, this call is, is for making the data spaces. We have one AD for uh, GD, but Juan is, Juan is there. Uh, so he's uh, the, the coordinator, so from CREAF, uh, working on um, biodiversity, uh, climate change, pollution, focusing much on, on the standardization. OGC is an important partner here, um, but as well cloud computing, HPC, and so on. We have then FairyCube, which is led by uh, Nilu in Norway, uh, which is more on fair data and also Internet of Things and, and citizen observed, citizen science, and so on. And then finally, we have uh, usage focusing on urban data, climate data, but every urban data, and also working on machine learning, um, artificial intelligence, and, and so on, data cube technology. Final slide, and then I'm done. Uh, we also have now, we are now preparing the next grant agreements. So we had a call in, in spring this year. We have, uh, we will fund six projects with a total value of 20 million on in situ measurements in how to reach areas and areas uh, for critical health. We will launch uh, three new projects on citizen observations, uh, total value of 14 million, and we will launch two projects on uh, One Health, so using Earth Observation for One Health, so human health, plant, plant health, soil health, animal health, one on early warning for mosquito-borne diseases, and one more on yeah, broader research. So a lot to come. I can, of course, not share the details because this is still confidential information. So that's it, and I just want to uh, invite you also for the EuroGeo workshop in uh, Athens, 7th to 9th of December. Uh, UG will be five years old, so we will look how do we, how can we do better, what, what governance should we, should we do in the next five years, 
And so uh, this is, of course, the place for you to connect with all the other projects. And so let's meet again in December. I hope so. Thanks, Erwin. In the meantime, I think we have a, um, a poll from Erwin on um, his talk. He's asking, what is the most important aspect to work on during a project to ensure that the results are actually used after the project? Uh, so this is another word cloud. Feel free to submit um, words multiple times. Um, and let's see. Yeah, for me, this is the most are. important aspect. I mean, you, you don't do things for yourself. You do things that you, you want to have impact. So people need to use at the end your results. You're all competitors, uh, so it's, it's not easy. So what do you do from the start of your project to make this happen that they would really be curious to learn about? Great, what are we seeing? Okay, fairness is a big theme of the day. Mm -hmm. Reproducibility, this is great. And we'll, once again, we're gonna save these results and um, publish them and make sure they're available um, to you all. Respond to any of these that are coming up? No, no, I'm just uh, looking at it and um, yeah, happy to see code development team, code design. Um, okay, the, the enormous amount of, of great things. Capacity building is of course very important. I mean, making sure that 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 people know and understand what you do. Uh, that it's not only accessible but uh, it's ready to use and uh, let's reflect on it. But the message is, please. Have this in mind from the start of the project that you don't think you you need to make sure that your results are being taken up. Great, thanks everyone for your responses. We have a couple questions. We'll put up. I think maybe we have time for uh, one or two. Um, Tom, can you see what the most recent ones are? one closing the gap. I think we got that one. Can you put up the most recent question or can you see it? Which one? Oh, all right. What is your favorite EU funded project so far? That's a good one to end on before our coffee break. Well, that, that's unfair to ask me. I mean, for me, every project has its uh, good things. Um, just a lot say, of the partners are here right now too. No, no, but, but just to say, I mean, Eurogeo for me, it has a lot of value. It's really the, the collaborative spirit of Geo working together, sharing insights. I mean, we know that you are all competitors, but still you are all facing the same issues. And, and as you said, competition for, for the time being is, is done and you are now uh, to, to collaborate. So for me, of course, eShape, I mean, it's a big project and, and they, they really did a marvelous job to, to bring the community together and to make good results, shareable and, and export. And I hope because Again, here we have two big coaches on the side, Open Earth Mount and eu 4 u that you collaborate in the same spirit. I mean, uh, the next step, of course, is Destination Earth, have an impact there with ECMWF and eo 4 u You are excellently placed on, on doing that. Uh, also, uh, as Tom explained, you, are, you have open data at the forefront of your ideas. You have great uh, companies on board um, that, that, that have impact today, that can enrich their portfolio, that can make their tools stronger, so please, be open, share your results. This doesn't mean that you have to give it all for free, but be open and, and, and exploitation at the end, that's the game. So, Ishe, but I hope that Open Earth Mode and eo for you will take it over. And there's a lot of other projects. I mean, I should, I should put the slide again with the overview and they're all great. Amazing, thank you so much.